Okay, in this movie we're going to have a look at sections and we're going to add a, a detail wall uh, before we uh, go in and actually put in some detail notes on that wall. So let's just have a look at what we've got in regard to sections already. Remember we put in a couple of sections here and here and for looking when we were putting the slab in and down, um, putting the uh, step down on the slab and we put one in here for when we were putting in uh, for the rafters. Now I'll just stay on this one because if you have a look at where this is on here, um, when we look at the actual um, section, which I believe is section 3, you can see there, we see everything through there at that point. We can do some hidden line and we can shade as well, but we're seeing everything back to where that section is. I'll just go back to hidden line. Um, and I don't want to see these doorways and I don't want to see these chairs and things. So if I come back onto my uh, ground floor plan and click on that, whoops, click on that section again, I'll just zoom in so I can get it. You'll see this blue dash box and that shows you what you will be seeing. So if I pull that in right back to here and we have a look and I really just want to look at this part here. I drag this over to here maybe just out a little bit there so it's not confusing or, or hiding that uh, door number and we go back remember you can highlight and right click and go to view or you can go down and pick the view down here you can see that we are now seeing that but we're still seeing those chairs there which is not that good we shouldn't be seeing those chairs actually um, just go back again maybe I've picked the wrong one there yeah, we shouldn't be seeing any chairs in it. Uh, it's still going all the way across there, that's why. So we'll just bring that back and line it up with there. Now let's have a look at that view now. And you can see how we're only seeing that particular part. If you've got this in the way, don't, don't worry. You can just drag that up and make it a bit higher. That's fine. And you can see that we now are looking at uh, just that part of the view. So we can change the way it looks by moving moving these around and moving the end across or altering that little blue box to where you want to actually get see what's, what's in it. I'm going to put in a new one now and um, to do that I'm going to come into view and I'm going to pick section. I'm going to put it in across this wall here so I'm just going to select there and drag across and right click, a uh, sorry, escape uh, a couple of times and I'm just going to line it up with the one below it so they all look the same. Uh, and if we come into this view, you can see that we're going across that window there. So we don't want that to happen. I'm going to drag that back a little bit to here. Okay, so we're only seeing this wall, wall section here. Um, we'll go into that view now. And that's what we see. We still have this IKEA thing here, and it looks like I've actually actually got two televisions there. Um, can delete one of those. I must have put one two in by mistake, so I'm just deleting one while I've found it. But I want to get rid of that, and I know that's that IKEA stuff. I can come into my visibility graphics, and I know that wasn't in furniture. It was actually in generic. Um, where is that generic? There it is. There and okay that and they should t TV I think was in furniture so we can come back in again and tick off the furniture as well so hopefully that will disappear okay now if we have a look at that we've got we can see a couple of things in this now we've got this box around it um, which is actually the the part that we're viewing remember we we pulled that in pretty tight on each side so that, that's the part we're actually viewing we also have our levels over here and we have our wall which looks pretty dark. Remember you can change the the detail by coming up, coming down to this box here, detail level, and it's on course at the moment. If we pick fine, we get what looks like the walls with even the pattern of the concrete in them and the uh, autoclave aerated concrete wall as well. Um, the other thing we can do there is just check to make sure your lines are on fine. If it's looking like that, Go up and click on that box and it'll turn those into fine lines. 
this box here is showing at the moment we can hide that if we want to get rid of it we can obviously move the size of it as well to whatever we want but if we come down here we can don't crop we'll take it out hide crop we'll hide it okay so we're looking at, at that right now now the other thing we can do is when we we're looking at sections that are only small sections like this part through the wall we can actually increase the scale so that we can see it a lot clearer our floor plan is going to be at 100 to 1 because it's so big and we just will not fit it on a sheet if we leave, make it any bit, any um, the, the scale any smaller. But with this one, we know it will fit, so we can come in and change this to a scale of 50. Straight away, you saw all this text here. It appeared to get smaller. What actually happened was the text always stays the same size. The drawing got larger because we um, reduced the scale. So... The next thing you need to do is to come in and to modify some of these levels. We need to tidy them up. It's a it's a real pain in Revit because every time you set up a new view, it won't set them up as you have in other views. So you just got to come in and you just got to be patient and move these around so that you can read them all. And I think I might move that one up actually. Try and be consistent with the way that you actually set these up. Go and have a look at your... Uh, no, wait a minute. Just select that one. Be, be consistent with the way that you're doing it and um, you shouldn't have too many problems. I'm just going to make that one go up a little higher there now. Okay, so we've got all those in. Remember, if they're intriguing over here and you want them a little bit to the side, you can just select one of them and click on that little tab and you can pull them and move them around but don't move them out too far that's that's going to be fine because we're going to do something else to this drawing uh, down through here we're going to put in a break and you may have seen a break and you'll know what i mean as soon as i put it in so I'm, wait till we wait till we get it there and you and you'll see what i mean if we come into annotate and detail component uh, at the moment we've only got a brick joint in there we want to bring our own in from the family folder so click on edit and load detail items general and there's one called break line you may have seen that before when you are drawing something up and you don't want to draw the whole length of it because it won't fit on the page you normally put a break line in so I'm going to put that in I'm going to open this okay that and I'm going to okay that and I have my break line here I can't really see it yes I can it's looking like it's on the horizontal and I don't want it that way so I'm going to hit my spacebar key like we do when we spin anything around in Revit and it's going that way I want to actually go the other way believe it or not so I'm going to hit it again and again all right so we've got it in the right place come about halfway th through the height from the floor to the ceiling so I'm going to go about three 1300 be fine and I'm going to put it in around about 500 off the wall and I'm hitting escape twice we have it there but it's obviously it needs to be altered so that it fits our wall so I'm going to click on that I'm going to drown the drag the down arrow down you might have to zoom and pull around a little bit so that it goes beneath the bottom of footing I'm going to grab the top drag it up again you might need to just zoom in again so that it goes above the roof line and you can see straight away that it's cutting out this bit here again if we click on it again you can see that it's cutting out this little box here and that's why I spun it around again because it was would have been pointing in this direction so if you're finding that this box is coming this way all you need to do is to hit your space bar and it will spin it around okay so that's where I want it I'm going to drag this out until it covers that it's going actually right to the end of the pop box and I've got that happening there now okay so we've got our cover we don't really have to put these in, but they do look a little bit neater if we do put them in. We can also make that zigzag a little bit bigger. And we can come in, if you zoom right in, you've got a set of tools here that you can just make that a bit bigger that way. And a bit bigger that way. And we can move it up and down a little bit using that there. So that's fine. We'll leave it at that. And there's our section set up for our wall now the other thing we can do with this while we're in here if we go up and have a look at the roof and the wall it looks like they're not connecting 
and there would normally be rafters running across here. If we go and have a go back and have a look at our cross sectional view, that's not the one I want. Just bear with me. Come into our section one. If we highlight over the roof, you can see that beam is showing there because it's going along the outside wall. There would be beams like that. There would be A-frames across the house and there would be beams there that the ceiling would be attached to. But if we go back to our other section, which I'm just going to rename now, so just rename this as you come back, and I'm going to call it wall section. If we go back to our wall section, you can see there's nothing there. Now, this happens in Revit sometimes, so sometimes we've just got to fake the drawing a little bit by drawing it in uh, by hand, and it won't show up in the 3D version of it, so that's fine. So if we come into Annotate again and click on Detail Lines, just make sure your line style is thin. And I want you to draw a couple of lines. Now, we're going to come from that point there. I'm going to come up so it's on top of the top plate and come all the way across till it meets in there. Escape once. I'm just going to put another line in anywhere here at this stage. Hit Escape a couple of times. Select that line, and now we've got a temporary dimensioning there. I can click into that, and this beam is going to be 246 in height, and Enter, and then we can just hit Escape once. Trim that back. There it is there. And we now have that beam showing as it should there um, in our cross section. So everyone will know what that is. The other thing we can do here is we would normally have some insulation in this timber wall frame on the outside here. In Annotate as well, you can see that you have an insulation. You can set the width. So 80 is going to be great for exactly what we want. We can come into the center and drag that up until we get to the top plate and hit escape a couple of times and we have our insulation in there. Likewise, we could draw a rebar, which is reinforcement bar in our foundation. We're not going to worry about that, that at this stage. And if you want to, you can certainly go and have a look at uh, some of the other tutorials that are available on YouTube or on Linda, or the ones that I've provided in the website to see how to actually draw in some rebar there. But we're not going to do it on this particular one. Next, we're going to add some some labels to this, um, so go on to your next video.